Well, friends, I think we'll make a start. It's lovely to see you again. Welcome, if you've not been before, to Team Talk. Um, we're really delighted that we've got Bernard with us today. Slightly new format, as you know, to Team Talk. We try to take about 15 minutes or so, unless we have a, an unusual visitor. That's nice for you to know, Bernard, isn't it? You're not unusual. <laughs> um, but uh, if it is, we, we would extend that time. Um, but uh, we're grateful to our brother Bernard, the recently retired Bernard Lewis. Uh, so he's got loads of time on his hands. So we jumped on him and thought he could do something, mate. And uh, Bernard's going to carry on, really, I think, from last week. But I won't say any more of that, lest I spoil it and, and steal his thunder. Two quick things to mention. Um, the first is, don't forget, we've got this, uh, the, the book that was recommended last week, the review that we had with Jonathan Thomas, which was really helpful. That's available from EMW Books. Rebecca, can you remind us of the website for EMW Books? Yeah, I'll put it in the chat now. Uh, it's ebooks.com. Thank you, because there's a, uh, a leader section there, terrific discounts. And remember, if you're looking for commentaries or things like that, they may not be listed on the website, but there is still a good chance we've got them in stock somewhere. And there are some serious discounts. So uh, just drop the, the uh, Rebecca or Steph uh, a line about that. And if they've got it, I'm sure they'll do you a good deal. The second thing is to say that next week, we're really delighted, but we've got our brother Ian Parry coming. Now, some of you, if you're on Facebook, will know that Ian does a daily prayer session by video from Grangetown Baptist Church. And uh, if you've not seen it before, try and dig it out. Have a look. I think you can get the videos actually on his church website. So if you Google Grangetown Baptist, you'll see it there. And through thick and thin, Ian has been plowing on with this. And we thought it would be really good just to have him come and talk for a quarter of an hour about why he decided to do this, some of the technical challenges, how he resolved those and, um, and, and how it's going in the hope that it might inspire perhaps others uh, to, to look at doing something like this, of getting the word out more, more regularly in the opportunities that we have in these days. So next week we've got Ian, uh, Ian Parry, but today we have Bernard Lewis, and uh, we better say, Bernard, that the words unstable and Bernard Lewis, well, that's three words, isn't it? They don't really go together. Um, but we better say that Bernard is a bit worried that his internet connection is a bit unstable. So if he falters, uh, just stay with us. Don't disappear, because I know what he's got to share is, uh, is really encouraging. Now, before Bernard speaks, Merv Neal, it's great to see you there, mate. The, the newly appointed, I understand, to, uh, well, why don't you tell us, if you unmute, tell us where you've recently been called and then lead us in prayer. Yeah, um, recently called, well, December, beginning of December, called to be the pastor of Cumdare Mission, which uh, we, we bought a house up here in uh, Aberdare uh, ooh, five years ago for when we were on furlough and uh, have helped out a little bit. We got back in March, having been kicked out of India, visas frozen, and we're doing all their ministry on internet because they relied on visiting preachers and they were all in isolation. And then in October, they started having a chat with us. Would you be willing to consider and pray about it? And uh, anyway, yeah, December, I was called as the pastor of Cumdare Mission. Wonderful. Well, with with just... the condition that they're going to uh, release us a couple of times a year um, when corridors reopen to continue um, conference ministry to pastors and evangelists in India and Nepal. Lovely. Well, thanks, Merv. Would you just pray now for... Yeah, so just, will you pray for Bernard and for us? Heavenly Father, we thank you that we come to you, the Lord God Almighty, who rules and reigns in the heavens above and the earth below. We praise you that you have manifested your glory to us, uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for his saving goodness to us, purchasing us with his precious blood on the cross, rising again for our justification, seated at your right hand, ever living to intercede for us. We thank you that you speak to us through your word, uh, through your servants, and we pray for Bernard uh, the Lord, that you would give him a stable internet connection. Mm. We pray that you would uh, blow Bernard's mind along by your spirit, uh, that you would plant your word in our hearts by your spirit, and it would do us good 
and bring you glory. For we ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Amen. Ben. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Move. Um, what I want to say this afternoon really has grown out of um, a comment that Phil made a few weeks ago, but also out of a bigger comment, a uh, bigger concern. Um, Phil mentioned the fact that a number of us are feeling the strain in this whole COVID situation, and um, the demands seem far greater than in our regular ministry. Now, alongside that, um, for many years now, I've been concerned about uh, the number of our brothers who actually uh, hit difficulties in ministry and sadly have had to step down from ministry. So, in a way, I want to ask a question. Um, how do we survive in ministry? How do we survive in the Christian life? The title that Phil has given me uh, for this is uh, Rest for Your Soul. And in effect, I suppose the question is, how do we find rest for our souls? I found last week so, so helpful. And um, even though I'm at a stage in life where I'm stripping down my library and trying to get rid of parts of it, I went out and I bought the book. I have to admit, sorry, EMW, that I bought it as an iBook. And um, I have really appreciated it. And um, it's, it's just been so refreshing. What I want to do today is to actually um, look at that passage of scripture where rest for your souls is mentioned in Matthew 11. I want to read the, the uh, closing verses of Matthew 11 and just the opening section of um, Matthew 12. I have a Bible, I want to follow along. Do so. But let's hear God's word. Matthew 11, verse 28. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. At that time, Jesus went uh, through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry. And they began to pluck ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, uh, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry and those who were with him? How he entered the house of God and ate the bread of the presence, which it was not lawful for him to eat nor for those who were with him, but only for the priests. Or have you not read in the law how on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are guiltless? I tell you, something greater than the temple is here. And if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Now, as I say, I've uh, taken that passage because here we are promised that we will find rest for our souls. But I want to put this in its bigger context. And um, that will help us see the battles that we are facing as Christians. Um, perhaps at this point, it might be worth me saying that at the end of this presentation, I've asked Rebecca to actually um, make available in the chat area a number of documents that I've put together that I've found helpful, and they will also be available uh, with the recording on the website. But putting this in the context, we need to go back in a way to the end of uh, Matthew 9. And there um, we see people who are living with the effects of the fall. In 936, we're told. They are harassed, they're helpless as sheep without a shepherd. Um, in chapter 10, we see the demands of ministry. In verse 16, the Lord sent his disciples out as sheep in the midst of wolves. 
and um, he says that um, brother will deliver up a brother and that he had not come to bring peace but to bring um, a sword and similarly um, when John the Baptist is described we are told that he is a man who is uncertain chapter 11 verse 3 are you the one who is to come and um, you think but he was so powerful and we go through times like this don't we in our ministries and we ask the question um am i on the right road am i doing the right thing have i got it right and i'm sure all of us have known the challenge of a lack of response to our ministry or perhaps an opposition to our ministry which is described in chapter 11 uh, verse 16 but to what shall i compare this generation it is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to their playmates we played the flute for you and you did not dance we sang a dirge and you did not mourn we're living at a time when we thank god there's been a revival in good preaching there has been uh, prayer for revival and yet uh, is that the silver bullet um are we seeing what we want to see no churches split churches are likely to close as a result of covid um we are seeing people finding the strain of the ministry too great so how do we cope well um we accept the reality of verse 28 where the Lord describes us as those who labor and are heavy laden. The night before Whitfield died, um, he said, Lord Jesus, I am weary in your work, but not weary of it. We do get to the point where the demands seem overwhelming. Um, but Jesus said to us, In this world, you will have tribulation. So, what's going on? is not unique although it may be different so i've shown the problem what is the solution well there's only one solution uh, in the late 90s i spoke to a colleague and said you know i'm beginning to, to feel rather dry in the ministry and they said well um there's a new master's course at west why don't you sign up from for that well it did and i found it profitable but i don't believe that that is the real solution i believe the answer is in this passage where the lord jesus christ gives what might be seen as an invitation but in fact it is a command and he gives two promises the invitation is come to me um, and that's a command come to me the two promises i will give you rest and you will find rest for your souls i want to ask a question which obviously is a rhetorical question and a question to which um, we would expect a negative answer the lord jesus christ promises rest so in our current circumstances is he being proven a liar no he isn't being proven a liar because his promises are real he says in john 14 that if you drink of this water then out of you will flow rivers of living water the promise here to find rest for your souls is the promise of a complete refreshment the the greek word is the uh, one from which we get our word psyche or psychology and jesus is saying if you obey my command if you come to me then your whole being body soul and spirit will be refreshed now he is not offering a one size fits all but what he is offering is a solution for you as an individual for you as a whole being and what is that solution if we acknowledge the problems that i outlined what what is the solution that we are given here the solution is 
come to me. And as I say, it's a command and the source is specific. Jesus could have said, and listen carefully what I'm, I'm going to say, he could have said, come and I will give you rest. But he didn't. He actually said, come to me. And to me is uh, there present in the Greek. Jesus is saying, if you're going to cope with all these challenges, then you will only do it as you come into a living and deepening relationship with me. Come and I will give you rest. In effect, Jesus is saying here what is recorded in uh, Acts 4, that there is salvation in no other. Christ is the only source of forgiveness. He is the only source of refreshment. And Christ wants you to come to himself. Now, as I said, I read the book, or I bought the book, and um, I, I've been reading it. And one of the first things that struck me was that um, Hardiman actually says this, Jesus says to your soul, show me your face. Let me hear your voice. Your voice is sweet. Your face is lovely. Um, but even the sight of a tear-stained face stammering out our own humble acknowledgement of our sin, our hatred of it, and our plea for his forgiveness rather than trying to manufacture our own is beautiful and lovely to him. And that just thrilled my soul. Jesus wants me to come to him. We, um, we, we happily pray, Lord, come to us. But here Jesus is saying, come to me. In effect, Jesus is saying, you're not a pain in the neck. You are someone that I want to be able to give rest to, and you are someone that I want to be able to teach. And there, um, I want us to look now um, as ourselves, as loving learners, as those who are prepared to go on learning from the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember in chapter 10, He'd already sent his disciples out. But now he's saying, come back to me. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. And you will find rest for your souls. One of my fears as a man with a number of years experience in ministry is that too many of us have an overdeveloped Protestant work ethic. But in fact, the biblical principle is that we should work and that we should rest. Had I prepared this before last week's session and before reading Hardiman's uh, book, I would have um, brought a very different emphasis. But I do want to bring out part of the emphasis that was my original focus. Exodus 34 21 says this for six days you shall work but on the seventh you shall rest and then he goes on to say you shall observe the feast of weeks the feast of wheat harvest the feast of ingathering at the year's end three times in the year shall all your males appear before the lord god the god of israel what are we being told there we are being told that we are to work but we are also to rest. In actual fact, we have a principle there of annual holidays as well. And we need to learn God's order for our lives. So are we willing to learn even at this stage in our lives? And notice he says, take my yoke upon you. Now, um, it's easy to see the yoke as the old Welsh yoke where they used to carry um, buckets of uh, milk just over the shoulder. That isn't the picture here. This is not a human yoke, but the yoke that is put across two animals where the older, more experienced animal is able to teach and to support and to help the, the younger animal. 
And that's what Christ is saying. Look, take my yoke. Walk with me. Work with me. And I will help you through this. Christ wants to share the load of our lives. He knows it's heavy. But he says, let's do this together. Learn from me. I trained as a teacher. And um, very early on, well, in fact, in my first term at college, we were sent out on teaching practice. And I thought, how could I do this? I've got no experience. But they knew what they were doing. They sent us out. They gave us the experience. They didn't expect us to be polished, but they brought us back. And they said, now let's reflect on that. And that's what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying to us here. I want to carry this burden. I want you to come to me because I love you. You are special to me. And I want you to grow as a result of this situation. Brothers, the work is tough. The challenges are great. But don't waste it. Don't waste him. I want to say to you at this stage, let's go back to our lover. Let's go back back to our teacher let us find the rest that he will give to our souls this text that i've taken is a childhood memory for me it was emblazoned on the walls of a chapel in the, the neighboring village at home but and so it's a text that i learned without consciously doing it because we visited that chapel but in the same chapel they had a choir now i don't believe that any of them probably knew the Lord as Saviour. But they, there was a performance uh, for an anniversary, and I remember them singing Isaiah 40 and verse 31. Um, and they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Come to me, and you will mount up because I will give you rest for your souls and refresh you. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Bernard. I love that phrase, loving learners of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a wonderful perspective, isn't it? And uh, another good plug for the book, which Jonathan was reviewing for us so helpfully last week, Jesus, lover of my soul. If you've not investigated that or you missed last week too, check out that book by Julian Hardiman that's recently been released.